Homer's Odyssey, from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. HTTP colon slash slash en dot wikipedia dot org. This article is about an episode of The Simpsons. For the epic poem, see Odyssey. For other uses, see Odyssey Disambiguation. This recording is based on a past version of the article, dated 28th of January 2009. It may not reflect subsequent changes. Introduction Homer's Odyssey is the third full-length episode of The Simpsons that originally aired on the Fox network on January 21st, 1990. In this episode, Homer becomes a crusader for citizen safety in Springfield and is promoted to his current position as nuclear safety inspector for the entire power plant. It was written by Jay Kogan and Wallace Wolodarski and was the first Simpsons script to be completed, although it was the third episode produced. Infobox Image. Montgomery Burns watches as Homer campaigns for nuclear safety. Production code 7G03. Showrunners. James L. Brooks, Matt Groening, Sam Simon. Directed by Wes Archer. Chalkboard. I will not skateboard in the halls. Couch gag. The family hurries onto the couch, which makes it collapse. DVD Commentary by Matt Groening, Wes Archer, Jay Kogan, and Wallace Wolodarski. The episode is preceded by Bart the Genius and proceeded by There's No Disgrace Like Home. Table of Contents Section 1 Plot Section 2 Production Section 3 Cultural References Section 4 Reception. Section 5. References. Section 6. External links. Section 1. Plot. Bart's class attends a field trip to the Springfield nuclear power plant. On the bus, Bart must sit next to Wendell, a classmate with horrible motion sickness. Bart is warned not to complain and is told that if he makes one more outburst, he will be forced to sing in front of the class. Sherry and Terry, the twins sitting behind Bart, both kiss him, causing him to yell. His annoyed teacher, Edna Krabappel, forces him to sing. At the power plant, Mr. Smithers shows the class an educational video about nuclear energy. During a tour of the plant, Homer greets Bart and causes an accident in this moment of distraction. Homer's supervisor, who is also Sherry's and Terry's father, immediately fires him. Unable to find a job, Homer turns to alcohol as a temporary solution to his depression. There is, however, no beer in his fridge, and Mo will not add one to Homer's tab because he believes that Homer will never be able to repay him. In a moment of desperation, Homer smashes Bart's piggy bank. He then realizes that he hates the man he has become, and decides to take his own life. While the family is asleep, Homer writes them a goodbye letter, quietly ties a large boulder to his waist, and leaves the house. The rest of the family eventually awaken to find Homer's letter. They run to the bridge that Homer intends to jump from. When they all step into a street, a car almost kills them, but Homer saves them by pushing them off the road. Experiencing a eureka moment, Homer realizes that he profoundly cares not only for the safety of his own family, but for that of the general public as well. Homer motions City Hall for a stop sign at the intersection where his family was almost killed. Encouraged by the successful passing of this motion, he begins a crusade for public safety, erecting various warning signs all over Springfield. He soon realizes that the power plant is the town's most dangerous feature, and with a growing mass of supporters, begins a campaign to shut it down. A nervous Mr. Burns offers to rehire Homer to a higher position as nuclear safety inspector with a larger paycheck. The condition is 
that Homer must end his campaign to close the plant. Deciding that he would rather be a good provider to his family than an idealistic public figure, Homer takes the job. He tells his supporters to continue without him while he works to ensure the safety of the plant. Section 2. Production Smithers was mistakenly animated with the wrong color, and was made black by Georgi Pelus, the color stylist. David Silverman has claimed that Smithers was always intended to be, quote, Mr. Burns's white sycophant, end quote, and the staff thought it, quote, would be a bad idea to have a black subservient character, end quote, and so switched him to his intended color for the next episode. Image, captioned, Black Smithers, as he is seen in this episode. This is the episode where Homer becomes the safety inspector at the plant. His previous job is unclear, although he calls himself a technical supervisor. He was originally hired as part of Project Bootstrap, a fictional government program implemented by the Ford administration to bring in unskilled workers. Blinky the Three-Eyed Fish makes a brief cameo in this episode. He later becomes of importance in episode 4 of the second season, Two Cars in Every Garage and Three Eyes on Every Fish. Also notable is that Marge was originally called Juliet in this script as an homage to Romeo and Juliet. Homer's middle initial, J, is mentioned for the first time in this episode. According to Matt Groening, it was a reference to Bullwinkle J. Moose. Additionally, the following characters made their first appearances in this episode. Otto Mann, Chief Wiggum, Jasper Beardley, although he does not speak until Bart the General, Sam and Larry, Mr. and Mrs. Winfield, and Sherry and Terry. Mr. Burns and Waylon Smithers also appear for the first time, although their voices were heard over the power plant's PA system in Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire. Section 3. Cultural References The episode's title comes from the Greek epic poem Odyssey, traditionally attributed to the legendary poet Homer. On the bus, Bart sings John Henry Was a Steel-Driving Man, an American folk song about a 19th century hero of the working class building railroads across the western mountains. Section 4. Reception Warren Martin and Adrian Wood, the authors of the book I Can't Believe It's a Bigger and Better Updated Unofficial Simpsons Guide, stated that, quote, the story rather fizzles out at the end, but there are many good moments, especially in the power plant. End quote. Other reviewers said the episode was notable but preachy. In its original American broadcast, Homer's Odyssey finished 28th place in the Nielsen ratings for the week of January 15th to 21st, 1990. It was the highest rated show on the Fox network that week. This concludes the recording of Homer's Odyssey. This sound file, as well as all text in the article, are licensed under the GNU Free Documentation License, available at www.gnu.org slash copyleft slash fdl.html.